everyone, it's Mike Sam. In this video, I'll show you how to get Dolphin 5.0, GameCube, and Wii emulator. The big news about Dolphin 5.0, which released June 24, 2016, is that the last stable release for Dolphin came out two years and eight months ago. It's been a very long time. That version two years and eight months ago was version 4.0.2, and now Dolphin 5.0 stable release has come out. It's incredible news. Dolphin 5.0 is definitely the GameCube and Wii emulator that you want. Now, if we look at the Dolphin official website, we see two sentences that really strike out. Dolphin 3.0, 3.5, and 4.0 progressively grew slower, but thanks to the cleanups put forward throughout those releases, Dolphin 5.0 is the fastest Dolphin has ever been. I made a video back in May 31st, 2013 about Dolphin. And the thing is, this was version 3.5. Some people had complaints. Now, in this video, it will be broken down to two main parts, requirements and installation. First up, requirements. If you want to go through the requirements, it'll be in the description. You don't have to listen to me talk about requirements, validating if my laptop or computer fits the requirements. You can just read them and verify it yourself. And then we'll skip through the video and get to the installation page. Now, I have summarized the requirements in this little notepad. The first requirement is that you need a 64-bit CPU and operating system. We will check that immediately. First thing you do, bottom left of your computer, if you're using Windows 10, you can search for PC. Once you search for PC, you right-click this PC, click on Properties. Here we will find system information. First thing that we look at is system type. We see that we need a 64-bit operating system, check, and a 64-bit processor, check. Second requirement, Windows XP is no longer supported. Windows Vista is no longer officially supported. We go back to that window that I popped up. I'm using Windows 10. Third requirement, Direct 3D 10 OpenGL 3 is required. This means AMD Radeon 4XXX, NVIDIA GeForce 8XXX, or Intel HD 2XXX is a minimum. So to check out GPU information, you go back to the search and type DXDIAG, which is the DirectX Diagnosis Tool. After you click on DXDIAG, you'll see this window. What we want to look at is Display 1 and Render. When we look at Display 1, we can see that I am using Intel HD Graphics 530. The way that they number the Intel HD Graphics is that if it is higher, it is probably better. In this case, Intel HD 2XXX is a minimum requirement. I have the 530, so I should fit the minimum requirement for the integrated graphics card. Now, you may have another graphics card on your computer or laptop. If you have a gaming PC, of course you'll have one. They say that a GeForce 8XXX is a minimum. I have a GeForce GTX 960M. This gets a little bit confusing because Nvidia has so many different models and then you get into this huge deal of comparing desktop and mobile graphics cards, which is very confusing. Here's how I determine if my graphics card is good enough. Now, I know that my Intel graphics is definitely good enough. If you want to double check if your Intel HD graphics is good enough, the best thing that you can do is look at the wiki page. I'll leave this in the description. It's the wiki page for Intel HD and Iris graphics. Now, when we take a look at this, what is required for Dolphin 5.0? This, this HD graphics 20000, which released January 2011. I bought this laptop 2016, this year. I should have a graphics card that fits the requirement. But to even double check, if we scroll down, this is in chronological order by release, we find the graphics card that I am using. Mine was 530, right? And then if we take a look here, down the list, we find my HD graphics 530. So definitely my graphics card for Intel HD graphics 530 released later in the lineup. Secondly, GPU. How do we do, what do we do about GPU? There's so many different versions of graphics cards. I took a Google search for the wiki page of the G GeForce 8XXX series. And what I like to do is I like to compare release dates. It's hard to determine which graphics card is good enough. If you look at the release date, you can kind of guesstimate if your graphics card is ready 
to run Dolphin 5.0. GeForce 8 series released November 2006. I think this is the graphics card they're talking about in their requirement notes. I'm not absolutely sure, but if your release date for your graphics card is later, then you can guess that your graphics card should be good enough. Compare release dates and hope for the best. For AMD, they suggest a Radeon HD 4XXX series. It was released June 16, 2008. Look at your AMD graphics card to see if your release date for your graphics card was later. There's a lot of information on this, these wiki pages. If you need any help with finding if your hardware and system requirements are valid, you can go to this link that I'll leave in the description. This contains a whole page on CPU, GPU, and RAM information. Almost forgot, what RAM do we need? Two gigabytes or more RAM is recommended. RAM speed does not affect emulation speed, but two gigabytes or more is definitely recommended. We can look back on this system page. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, so I definitely fit the minimum requirement. Next thing we'll do is the download. Now, this website's fairly simple. Dolphin's official website has a download page. You can see Dolphin 5.0 one month, one week ago. Dolphin 4.0.2, two years, eight months ago. Dolphin 5.0 also works for Mac. You, you will install it for either operating system. I'm using a Windows 10 machine and I will download it for you know, Windows. I'll save it to my desktop. It's just simple, executable. It is 18 gig, uh, megabytes. We will install that. All right, so I need to hit yes on this Dolphin executable. All right, Dolphin pops up. Install the language. English, okay. I agree. They have the Visual C++ redistribute. Okay, this is pretty nice. You don't have to install it separately. And then you install the program. After it's installed, you just hit finish. If we search for Dolphin, it's a desktop app, it appears right here. Now it says Dolphin can collect data on its performance. No private data is ever collected. You can choose yes or no for this. It's up to you. I'm just going to do yes because I really respect the Dolphin developers for working so hard over the past 13 years because Dolphin released in 2003. We will get a GameCube ISO to start off with. The GameCube ISO website that I personally like is Emu Paradise. I love this website. This is where you want to get for things related to emulator games. As well, Wii ISOs. They do have Wii ISOs. They provide it in a forum manner. The thing about these links is that you may need to create an account. There's also something called Wii U ISO, which provides Wii U ISOs as well as Wii ISOs. This is also in a forum setup, and you can search for a game that you want to see if Dolphin can run. The thing is, I'm going to download a GameCube game just because they're smaller so I can download it faster. I'm going to check out Tales of Symphonia Disc 1. On this next page, you can scroll all the way down until you find this direct download link. This is about one gigabyte, so I can just click on the link and I will have to enter the capture and get my file. Now, I think I need to play this. And then I need to type in the word, which is hockey stick, verify and download. And it prepares my download. I can scroll it for the direct download link. I'm just gonna click the direct download link and I'm gonna save it to my desktop. Now it is a .7z file and it will take a while to download about 30 minutes for a gigabyte file so i will come right back in 30 minutes and proceed with the video so symphonia has finished downloading it is a .7z file that means it is an archive file we need a program to extract that file i will use 7zip on my windows machine 7zip.org you can get this program i like it to extract any compressed file you can download the 64-bit version. I have it already downloaded it and I have it installed on my computer. You can do that very quickly. Once you've done that, you can go to your desktop, right-click the 7z file, 7-zip, 
and hit Extract to Tales of Siphonia. Now, it will take a couple minutes to finish extracting. I'll speed up the video and come back when it is finished extracting. Extracting is finished. We can hit the close button at the bottom right of this window. If we open up the Tales of Siphonia folder, we can see the .iso file. That is our game. Now, I always like to create a new folder to keep all our games at one place, but we should open up Dolphin first. So the thing is, when we open up Dolphin, it says Dolphin could not find any GameCube Wii ISOs or WADs. Double click here to set a games directory. We should make a folder where all our, our games will be at. So the folder will be created on my desktop because I like things all on my desktop. I'll call it GameCube and Wii games and hit enter. Now I have a folder called GameCube and Wii games. What I do now is take Tales of Symphonia here and drag and drop it into GameCube and Wii games. I'll close this window out and delete the Tales of Symphonia folder because it's empty now. Now I can double click here to set a games directory. It is on my desktop, GameCube and Wii games. Select folder and we can see the game pops up. There's a banner, title, maker, size, and a little icon to signify that it is a GameCube game. Now, first thing that you should do, play the game. Okay, what do we see here? It says video info. It shows you what graphics card is currently running the emulator. In my case, instead of using Intel HD graphics, it used the stronger graphics card, GeForce GTX 960M, which is what I want. You will also see important information, FPS. This is 60 frames per second. This is what you're looking for. 60 frames per second is perfect. Now for configurations. The thing about configurations on Dolphin 5.0 is that there's a configuration button here. Now there are a few tabs. These aren't that important. You can change these. Advanced shows something interesting. We see CPU options. Now higher values can make variable frame rate games run at a higher frame rate at the expense of CPU. Lower values can make frame rate games run lower, saving CPU. If you're not managing to get 60 frames per second, you can raise this this way. All right, that's basically it with that section. Graphics, you can change some of this information, just some typical general setting configurations. We can change some of these stuff to try to improve performance or provide extra enhancements. You can disable fog if the fog is taking too much GPU power, etc. What I suggest is that if things are working already, then you don't need to change any of this. But if things aren't working to your expectations, play around with it. See what works. Check things off. Just check things off. Emulators are about experimentation. Messing around with the emulator is what you should do. There's some extra stuff in the advanced sections where you can show stats, load custom textures, controller settings. At the controller settings, we can see GameCube controllers because we're playing a GameCube game. We can hit configure to see what controls are available to us. Here is where we learn the controls. Basic stuff, it maps A, B, X, Y, Z, up, down, left, right, the C stick, triggers, etc. You can take a look at this. You can change the radius and dead zones to fit your settings. You can add extra controllers and even connect Wii remotes. A supported Bluetooth device could not be found. Real Wii remotes, that's pretty cool. You can connect real Wii remotes to your computer. More information will be on the FAQ of the site. Let's run the game to see how well it runs. Now, if I proceed through the game, the first thing that we see in Tales of Symphonia is the intro cinematic. While that intro cinematic is running, let's talk about some of the features that you can use while the game is actually running. Now, the first thing is you can record gameplay with the Dolphin emulator. This is cool. I like to record gameplay. It's useful if you want to show off some gameplay of yours that you are playing on the Dolphin emulator. You can find it in one of the tabs at the top. The game is also running 60 frames per second at the moment. 
It drops maybe one or two frames every now and then, but always stays around 60 frames per second. On movie, you can start recording input. That's really useful. You can dump frames, dump audio, but the start recording input, it's pretty cool to record gameplay. Next up is the best feature of emulators. Well, before we get to that, you can choose to frame skip or not. At the moment, I'm not skipping any frames because my computer is pretty strong. It can handle the load. Save state and load state. Save state and load state is very useful for quick saving. For instance, if I save state at slot 1, it saves the state at that point in time of the game, of that particular game. If I want to go back in time to that particular quick save, I can go to load state and find slot 1 to load into that particular state. If I load the state, I will go to that point in time. As you can see, I hit slot 1 at load state. And I go back a few seconds when I hit save state earlier in the video. See, it just went back, it said loaded the state a few moments back in the video. And that's a great thing about save state and load state. Now those are the core features of Dolphin. It's just a great GameCube in Wii emulator. On the tool section, you can start Netplay for playing multiplayer with your friends. You can install WADs for potentially Wii Virtual Console games. You can connect Wii remotes from here too. It's an all around great GameCube and Wii emulator.